Hello everybody, welcome. 12th of May. Thanks for joining us folks. What am I doing? Hope you're all keeping well out there in the big wide world. Um, what I'm doing right now is about to give my notices. <laughs> Come and join us on Zoom Clay, if that grabs you. Or come and join us for a workshop. We, I have reinstated my workshops. They are back in. We're back in the flow. So if you'd like to, this weekend we have a workshop actually, and I've some of the people who were on that workshop are now back again. So that's great. Um, I understand that if you can't make it and you have a change, a changes, changes in your plans, which we've all had. Yes. Um, yeah, these are these little ramekins. Let me show you. Ramekin, or that's what they really called like ramekins. I don't know where the word ramekin actually comes from originally. But these are small. A ramekin is really a, a small, generally a rather small sort of container vessel, you know, for. When I was growing up, my parents used to have ramekins. The other, the other name they would give them was egg bakers. Egg bakers. So you put an egg in here, and then you put it under the grill, and you grill it. You can basically use them for anything. So th this is this is what we're trying to make. That's these. Uh, pretty simple, basically cylindrical, with uh, a slight. A slight V shape to them, rolled rim. Um, yeah, these are got these are just decorated in cobalt with a little with a little type of motif there on the inside and a different one there. Okay, so these are eight and a half ounces, and they are thrown four and a half. No, four and three quarters. Four and three quarters wide. And they are just a smidgen under two inches deep. Okay, I've done one. Um, let me just show you a little bit closer. get the sideways profile there. What we're going to do now is set up this uh, a gauge because I've got a dozen or so of these I'm going to make. I haven't made any for a, quite a while. Uh, I just want to... They're so... I tell you what, they are so useful just in the kitchen for... I just find I use them all the time for leftovers whatever they're fired in the kiln face to face like that this is another good reason to have a rolled rim it gives you a good location when you put them face to face like that all right let's do it let us do it so this one is done I haven't cut him off so when you are going to use a gauge don't cut off and then decide you're going to set a gauge because I guarantee once you've cut him off he will go he will go off center so that's no good for setting up a gauge all right I'm just going to take these glasses off me here this pair of glasses they hang and fall into my pot you just want to set up the gauge so it's not touching, you want to leave at least a sixteenth of an inch. So just check it in my mirror there. Okay, cut off wire. And the way to lift these off is like this. Don't try and cup it like that. 
because your hand will impinge on the rim. So we're going to do double Winston Churchill inverted <laughs> victory sign. Just think of it like that. All right, we'll put him down there. Like that. Okay, let's just do, I'll just do a few. Show you. Yeah, it's rather cold weather we're having here at the minute. For the middle of May, it feels like the middle of March. It really does. So, always when you're working to a gauge, you're going to have to be a little bit careful that you don't smack the gauge. Okay, breaking in. And now going in and widening the clay across the base. Forming the base, compressing the bottom, it kind of happens naturally, compressing the bottom. Adjust my mirror there a bit. So, as always, it's a case of when you start any batch of doing anything where you're where you're throwing to a gauge, you've got to find your your rhythm, your throwing rhythm, you know. Which it doesn't happen immediately. You just have to work at it a little bit until you get into the groove, if you know what I mean. And then you suddenly find that once you've got into your groove. They will. You really, you can really get get down to making them a lot quicker. Just a little bit of. Make a few just until you can. Find that that rhythm, that groove, and then. sure about this one actually down on the bottom there something is a little bit odd I'm not sure yeah he's a little bit this one is a little bit a bit a bit ah uh, yeah you see that let's cut him through he's too he's too thin in the base I thought it was something I did did a bit something all right just to show you uh, you can see the base here, see how thin that is, you see? It's alright. As I say, it's, 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 it's groove finding. <laughs> it's groove finding time. <laughs> So the next one I do, I'll be a bit more careful, won't I? Yeah, we don't want to make our pots too thin in the base for obvious reasons. Okay, now lifting up the wall. Roll that rim. Lift them up to the gauge.
down the side with my throwing stick and the bevel on the bottom. The all important bevel. You see, you see that bevel there? You see, it makes it so easy just for thumbing off. Okay, this one I'm going to bring the camera angle down so you get a little bit more of a sideways view as I'm throwing. So let's drop it down. And let's bring it around here a touch. Something like that. And let's bring it in a bit like that. Hopefully, I won't knock the tripod. See that move there with a the thumb or your finger but you want to put something there like that just to clean away that clay right at the base you see because that's from where your pot that's from where your pot is going to grow from So I'm, I'm touching the clay just on the front face of my fingers here. Okay, the pads of my fingers there. Not the sides of my fingers. Not like this, but like this. See, when you touch the, the pot, you exert, you exert drag on the side of the pot, you see. Which a lot of people, you see, get torque twists. A lot of people so suffer from torque twists. And, and really torque twists is because you're exerting too much um, drag on the side of the pot. And then if you throw into the mix as well, um, insufficient watering, you've got a real recipe there for, you want to know how, how to get a torque twist? <laughs> Just cut back on the water and uh, you'll soon discover. Okay, we just rolled the rim there. Okay, now we just got to do the outside. We're kind of up to the gauge there. So, putting the stick in there. See, I took that off. And now I'm putting in the bevel. Alright. So, the reason I just take off the, the slurry is so I can get the pot off because it's pretty difficult to get a pot off the wheel it's as, this one has got a little bit of a going up and down isn't he that's all right that's all right must have been something to do with my when I did the rolled rim there it made it go up and down a bit okay leather the rim and sponge him out and cut through. Okay, just dry off your hands. Double inverted. Put him down over there. 
and that's it. Okay, folks. The sun is coming in there. We welcome that, even if the wind is a little bit cold out there. Uh, let's pull that back a bit. Yeah. So these are going to be raw glazed. And, um, and once fired, in actual fact, these ones that I did here were in fact bisque fired. These actually date back to before we moved here to Milheim. This is down at Etna Furnace. That stone house, that big long stone house. That's when they, they were made. Um, yeah, zoom clay. You fancy a lesson? Basically, it's 30, it's 30 bucks. And you get two sessions for, of 40 minutes. Two sessions of 40 minutes. Or an hour and a half, whatever happens. Sometimes it cuts, off, it cuts out after 40 minutes. And then, but I just restart it. I send everybody a link and we restart again. Uh, although the last time I did it, for some reason, it, ra it ran straight the way through till for an hour and a half. I don't know. I don't know how it works, really, to be honest. But anyway, it's 30 bucks for twice 40 minutes or an hour and a half thereabouts. So if that grabs you, uh, wherever you are on planet Earth, <laughs> Zoom Clay will reach you. <laughs> yes, and as I said about workshops, if there's any workshops there, we may have a, a little bit of an opening in the shutdown business. So I'm going to try to push through a few workshops now while we can because I envisage there being a shutdown or a lockdown again a bit later. All right, so I just want to take the opportunity to try and just cram in a few workshops. So if that's something that appeals to you, you want to come, look at the dates on the website and um, write to me. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Keep practicing or carry on practicing wherever you are and I will see you later. All right. Bye for now.